Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Off Workshop. In today's video, I want to talk about routers. I have routers all over the shop with the CNC machines, but I also use the routers for other tasks when I'm making cabinets and other projects. And the one that I want to show you today is this one. This router is by the Vivor company, and I've had it now for about a month, and I'm really enjoying being able to use this. And what's nice and when you buy one router, it's like getting four because of all the different components that you're getting. I want to talk about this router and other routers that you can have that will make your projects go a lot better. Now, having routers in your shop can be very, very beneficial. They can do so many different tasks because I do have the routers on the CNC tables, but you know, you may not have a CNC machine and that's okay. I also have a router that's set up in an actual router table. In addition to that, I will use the routers to be able to have them set up for a special task. One task I have is for the uh, biscuit joints and it's a very, very old setup, but I still use it today. When you look at the Vivor site, you actually have several choices. The 9699, as of the date of this video, is for all four pieces but you can choose just one or the three piece combination. Quite frankly, I don't know anywhere that you can get a better value for your money than this. And I chose to have all four pieces because it's like having four routers in one. When you unbox this and see all the different components that you have, it's really pretty amazing. Not only do they give you the different wrenches and tools that you need, but you also get bits and you get all four of the bases that you need to be able to do just about any type of work that can be done with a router. And the plunge router base is something that is going to get a lot of use in my shop as well as the trim router base. Now the other two designs were a little bit different than I have seen before, but I am very, very pleased with the dust collection attachments that they have and the different accessories and not only do they include the bits, but they also include an extra set of brushes that certainly will come in handy as I use this router. As I have said, routers are an integral part of my uh, shop. And this is the Makita on the Inventables CNC X-Carve. And here I have the DeWalt uh, 611 that's on my new carve, the CNC for newbies. And then over at the router table, I have another DeWalt 611 router that I use there. And this router table, quite okay, frankly, is very, very useful in the shop. Now this is a variable speed router and the RPM is from 10,000 and then you can adjust the speed all the way up to 30,000 RPM. So having an adjustment, I actually like that. Some of my older routers do not have the ability to adjust the speed and now that I have routers that have a variable speed, it really is an advantage depending on the type of material that you're actually cutting. Of course, you have the off and on switch right here. Now this is a 110, 60 Hertz uh, router and it is available in the 220 volts. And this is an 800 watt router. Another feature that's worth noting, if I take this out, this diameter is 65 millimeters. So for a lot of the CNC enthusiasts out there, if you're looking for a router that will fit your CNC machine, oftentimes they will have the uh, adapters to be able to put on your CNC machine that are the 65 millimeter. Now this comes with two straight bits. This is the quarter inch, and this is the eight millimeter that is a 3 8 inch diameter. And of course you have the collets that go with it. So this would be the collet for the quarter inch. And of course you have the collet for the eight millimeter that will go in there also. Now I typically do not use the eight millimeter. So I don't know how popular that is where you live and the availability of the bits, but it, this does have that option where you have the eight millimeter. In addition to that, you have an available 9.53 millimeter uh, tapered collet that you can get also. 
So that is just depending on what type of bits that you have available in your area. For me, the most common that I use is the quarter inch. I want to show you just a sampling of the type of bits that you can have for the router. Everything from a quarter inch rabbiting bit, uh, cove bits, Roman OG bits, and just continue on. These are roundover bits that I use quite often for projects. The V groove bits here, and this is a 90 degree V bit right here. And these are two different dovetail bits. One's a half inch and one's a, a um, three eighths. And then I have some straight bits. In addition to that, there's many, many other different bits that you can purchase to be able to use with your router. I wanna talk about the different uh, bases that come with this router. Now this is the trim router base. Now the diameter from the center point out to the edge is the same in all directions except for back here. You'd have to be careful for this because this does have additional attachment that you can put on. But this is very, very nice for being able to follow a path to be able to put an edge on a particular project. Now, as with any of the different tools that you may have, there are gonna be some things that you like and there's some other things that you may not like. Well, on this particular router, there's a couple of things too that I like and dislike. And one of the things is I like this type of quick release. This is a cam lock. It just flips over and it locks the router in position. Now this is that trim router base that I was showing you earlier. But here's the problem. This one was very loose and it really didn't hold the router in tight at all. But there's an easy fix to it. Right here is a little locking nut. That lock nut can be adjusted. So if you close that up, and then put in an eight millimeter little wrench. You can then tighten that and you can adjust it to the tension that you want so it'll be perfect. So on this base, I actually did the same thing. Now this cam lock was actually in pretty good shape, but when you lock that over, you have access to that lock nut and you can just put that eight millimeter wrench in and tighten it up. And that's all you need to be able to do to adjust this and solve that problem. Now this is an example of a flush trim bit because it has the bearing up here on the top and it makes it where when you cut a project, you'll cut it perfectly flush with the item that you're running this bearing against. And this is really, really nice when you're using a pattern and you're trying to cut out your project but you can actually duplicate this without having to purchase a bit like that with this attachment right here, because there is the bearing right there, very similar to this bit. And this will attach right onto the side of this base. Now, once this is mounted, you can set the height of this for any height that you need. You can also make the adjustments here to be able to have this go in or out to be able to fit whatever project that you have. And once you have everything set, you can just tighten it down. This needs to come out just a little bit more. And then I could tighten that down and that would be set. In this type of example, this bearing would be running against a pattern and then you would be cutting with the top portion of your project. So that's how that would actually work in the real world. And that would take the place of having a ball bearing on the bit itself. One of the bits that I use quite often is this 45 degree chamfering bit. Now this does have the bearing on top and this is very effective for putting nice chamfered edges on plaques or different types of projects and I really like this bit. But with this router, you can duplicate that. Now this is the example of using that 45 degree chamfering bit. Now this was done with the uh, bit with the ball bearing on it. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do it with the straight bit. With this next base put on, you can tilt this over to 45 degrees. Now to be able to use this straight bit 
to cut the 45 degree chamfer, you do have to set up this temporary fence to be able to keep it where it's nice and parallel and it will ride right along the back edge of the base. And that's really the only difference between using the straight bit with that little auxiliary fence and using the actual bit that has the ball bearing on it. Either way, the router has to have something to act as a guide. So now let me just do this test cut for you and I'll just run this right along my auxiliary fence and that cuts the perfect chamfer. And by looking at this, you really couldn't tell the difference if it was being done with the straight bit or the 45 degree chamfer bit with the ball bearing. The results are exactly the same. Now this base is one that I have never seen before. It is an offset base. It allows you to get into very tight places that you would not otherwise be able to get into. And to be able to set that up, you have the belt right down inside of here. Now with this, you have a little sprocket that you would just screw onto this. Tighten it down, of course. And then you would be able to put that right down inside of here. And just by screwing this sprocket in, you can put the belt on it, put the collet and the bit in, and you'd be able to do some very close uh, cutting with that. And of course, this cover would go back on, or this base would go back on. Now with this base back on the router, you can see how this could get into some very tight areas that otherwise you would not be able to get into. So this is pretty amazing. I look forward to being able to test this out and try it on some different projects. Now this base is not finished showing surprises. I'm gonna take this base off and we're gonna turn it around and I can have this hole being accessed and I can actually have a knob right here that I'll be able to put on. I wanna show you how to do that. Now by putting the trim router base back on, I can use that same base for the offset and put this knob on and now I have greater control over the router. So this is another very versatile application that you just don't see in other routers. And I just took this base off, put this base on and attached the um, handle to it and I'm ready to go. Now I ran into one other problem that I wanna be able to point out to you. On this particular base, you can see where I put the handle in and it has a place for two screws. Well, this is a little bit misaligned. I can put the one screw in, but this other one, I'm gonna actually have to modify the base just slightly to be able to accommodate being able to get that screw in. Again, it's an easy fix, but I wanna show you that there was some quality control issues when they made this particular base. And the last thing I want to point out to you, which does not affect how this machine operates, but again, it was a quality control issue. And we'll go back to this trim router base. And if you can see, I'm going to get this up close. This little knob right there just did not come out as nice and pretty as it should have. It's a little bit warped, if you will, and distorted. Again, it does not hurt the function. It's just a little bit of a quality control issue. Now, as far as the plunge router base that you put in here, this has all the features of the big full-size routers. And I absolutely love it because, one, I've never had a plunge router, and this has all the different features that you would want in one. On the back side, you have that quick-release clamp again. The nice thing about it is there's no adjustment. It has a ring down here inside of it where... This router base will slip all the way in and stop exactly where it needs to be. And then you can just clamp it down and it's locked. You're ready to go. You also have the dust collection. And I really, again, you know I like the dust collection. So that's a good feature. And then on this side, you have a setting that you can control the depth. This has a little screw that you can set, and there's a little nut on here that you can lock it. That way you can have any different depth that you want and plunge down exactly where you need to. And that's three different settings. Right here you have the 
micro setting where you can change that and adjust it. Basically, you have a zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you have this set up for literally 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6. So you have a very small adjustment that you can make on this setting to be able to change. And that's very nice. You also have this guide. This will slide in and out. You can tighten it down on both of the arms. It holds it in place. And you also have this attachment right here that will slide on just by loosening this nut. Slide that on. And now you have the ability to have a fence built into the uh, plunge router. So just by loosening this, you can pull this out to any distance that you want. Set it, lock it, and then you'll be able to make your cut. This is going to be a great addition in the shop. Now, again, on one of the negatives that I found, the screw that they provided really did not work well for this, and I had to use my own screw, and I used my own nut to be able to attach this. So again, I would say that's a quality control issue and not really something that's going to cause a problem with the operation of the machine itself. On the back side, you do have that lock. And that fixed it so it will not go up and down. So again, a lot of very nice features that you find on the more expensive, heavy-duty uh, plunge routers. Well, there you have an overview of how I use the routers in my shop. My shop would not be the same without having a number of routers in it. And this new router that I'm adding to the shop is going to be a great, great addition because it has so many different functions that the other routers just don't have. So I would quite frankly be lost without having routers in my shop. It would make a huge difference and it would really slow down the productivity. So I hope you enjoyed this video today and I hope that you was able to learn something about the introduction of the Vivor uh, router that I showed you. I think it has a lot of great features. But if you did like this video, by all means, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below on how you use the routers in your shop because a router is one of the most versatile tools that's available in the shops today. So I hope that you will leave me a comment. Tell me how that you're using your router. I would love to be able to share it with everybody in the community. And again, thanks guys. I really appreciate you stopping by, spending some time with me. Hit that like button and don't forget, hit that little that little button down there, a little subscribe button that says, hey, you want to be notified for the different videos that I'm uploading. So until next time, I look forward to seeing you in the shop. So bye-bye now. Can't wait to see you again.